In this session, we're going to have a look at some of the general settings in the menu of the Suprema Face Light Terminal. So I'm going to go straight into the uh, menu by pressing the escape key. It's letting me straight into the menu because I don't have any uh, employees or staff or administrators enrolled on the device at all. It's completely defaulted to uh, factory settings. So if I uh, use the uh, up and down arrow key, which is the F1 and the F2 keys, I can uh, go up and down the, the, the general menu. So the first thing I'm going to have a look at is authentication. So I'm going to click OK there. And we'll have a look at authentication mode. Um, I want to drop down to card mode. So this is showing us uh, whether we can uh, use a card only or whether a card has to be used in conjunction with a face or with a, um, a PIN number, for example. Um, what it's currently set to by default is uh, card plus face or card and a PIN. Well, I'm going to change that. I'm going to set that one to be uh, never. Okay, by doing that, and I'm going to go back up to card only, and I'm going to change that one to always. So that would allow me to um, enrol somebody with just a card or a fob uh, to, to allow them to clock in uh, instead of using their face. Confirm that we want to save that. We'll have a quick look at face mode. Um, so here it's saying um, it will we accept um, a face only for clocking in, clocking out, which is what it's currently set to, or do we need to also supply a PIN number as well as a face, so like a two-stage verification. So I'm happy with face only, so we'll, we'll come out of there. Um, I'm going to drop down to TNA, time and attendance. Uh, so we can set a number of different events for the time attendance, so we can have a, a function key for in, function key for out, etc. But um, for what we generally use it for, uh, we're going to set that to not be used at all. So I'm going to drop down by drop down to T and A mode, uh, and I'm going to say not used. Okay, and we'll save that. Um, and again, we can drop down to face. Uh, so this way we can control some of the settings regarding the face sensor. So we can set the level of uh, brightness. We tend to just leave it as normal. We can have a quick look into there. We can set it to automatic or high. Um, I tend to just leave it as normal. Um, but if you're experiencing some problems in the location that you have it in, you might want to look at changing those. Um, the face pose verification. Uh, I just tend to keep it as as default as 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 the value for, but uh, we can, we can increase that if that's needed. Um, motion sensor, uh, so that's how um, uh, quickly it's able to detect that there's somebody in front of the uh, device for uh, and puts it straight into scanning mode. Um, I tend to just leave it again as 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 medium. Um, if uh, if you actually set the uh, sensor mode to off then that means that uh, you have to actually have to press one of the keys to uh, like a function key to say that you're clocking in or clocking out uh, before it starts scanning so that, that's quite a, an important option if you don't want it to automatically scan somebody as soon as they stand in front of the device then you would switch the motion sensor off but I think in this case we'll keep the motion sensor on uh, you might have noticed it timed out there as I was just uh, talking through those options. Um, so we're going to have a look at uh, changing uh, those settings in a moment. So see if there's anything else down in uh, face authentication. We've got an enrolment timeout. So if it takes too long for it to be able to process somebody's face during the enrolment process, then it's going to time out and uh, ask the person to, to try again. Um, authentication timeout so how long it's going to spend uh, look, looking at somebody's face before it realizes it doesn't know who it can't identify them or verify them um, a duplication check uh, so we can we can ensure that the same person isn't being enrolled more than once on the device uh, um, 
it's different security levels that we can set it to again we tend to just to keep that as as standard um, there's a few other options there's an option there for um, blocking if it's uh, enhanced enrollment so it basically prevents somebody with a, f a fake face being detected so which would obviously block uh, block that but uh, we'll leave it off at the moment but uh, that, that's an interesting feature that this device has okay so if we uh, come out of the authentication screen and drop down to display and sound have a look in there uh, so the uh, if we drop down to backlight timeout um, you might have uh, noticed sometimes in the past where the device will actually go into a, uh, a sort of like a very grey or, or uh, greyed out or dark mode um, after a certain amount of time. Uh, it's just to, uh, just to prevent the amount of light that's being cast from the screen and also to reduce the amount of energy consumption. Um, look again, we've, we've timed out there. So uh, go back in there. Um, so if we change uh, backlight timeout, I normally change it to uh, 60 seconds. That seems to be a reasonable setting. Okay. Um, and again, the menu timeout, um, we're going to increase that um, to, uh, again, to 60 seconds. You can make it infinite, um, but as a safety feature, if you accidentally left the menu, uh, left the device alone while you're still in the menu, uh, it means that somebody else could go in, into the menu and, and, and change settings or delete an employee or delete all employees, something like that. So we wouldn't want that to happen. So I tend to put something in, but, but one of the higher, higher settings, like 60 seconds. Um, so uh, another option there is uh, voice instruction that's currently disabled. So I think we'd like to have that on. Okay, and then uh, further down, uh, we've got a, an option for changing the volume. Um, we're in a quite quiet setting at the moment, but if it's in a noisy factory area, you might want to increase that a lot higher. Um, okay, so I'll just okay, apply those. Um, I'll drop down to device, have a quick look in there. The first option we've got there is date and time. Again, we'll have a look in here. So one of the first things I would change is uh, the time sync uh, value. Uh, so normally we, we have that disabled when we're using it with uh, the Focus software. If you're using it with Biostar 2 or something like that, then yeah, sure, you could leave time sync enabled. But uh, we can switch that one off because Focus will update the date and time during the download process anyway. So we'll disable that. Okay, uh, so uh, with that changed, if we wanted to change the date and time, uh, we could do manually, uh, but I think it's probably okay as it, as it is. Um, we can drop down to uh, date format. So um, we can change that to be, uh, for example, UK date format, day, day, month, month, year, 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 year. And okay that. And uh, change it from being 24 hour clock, 12 hour clock. But I'm happy with that, so let's just apply those. We can drop down to Relay, um, and at the moment the Relay is disabled. So um, if you really wanted to, you could set the device up so that uh, every time that you clocked in and out, uh, in the, uh, and it was a valid um, verification, it would fire the Relay. That could be used for, for access control purposes if you wanted to. Um, but we're, we're not doing that today, so I'm just going to leave that as it is. Um, device info is quite useful. It allows us to see um, the model number, the device ID, uh, MAC address details, firmware versions, etc. So that, that can, can be quite useful. Um, memory usage, we can we can see see where we're up to with that. Um, should be quite minimum at the moment because it's I've not got any employees on here at the moment. And um, a few other options down here, such as restarting the device. So restart device basically just means rebooting the device, uh, which is something one might want to do occasionally um, if it drops off the network or something like that. Um, we've got another option here, which is restore default, which, as it suggests, will restore the factory settings. So I think we'll avoid that one. Um, if we drop down to network, uh, it would normally be TCP IP that we'll be looking at in here. And uh, it shows us the default port number, which we, we tend to leave. Um, at the moment, it's got DHCP enabled, but we can change that so it's uh, disabled. Okay, that. And then we're, if we do that, we're then able to actually 
type in a fixed IP address for the device, which when you're using focus is, tends to be what we normally would do. Um, now one thing to note on most Suprema devices is uh, the device has to be connected to the network for it to fully accept the IP address. Uh, you can it probably will let you type the IP address in, let you press OK to save it, but um, you might reboot then reboot the device and it will probably forget that IP address and go back to how it was. So one thing definitely one one to note that if you're going to put fixed IP address in, make sure it's got a connection to the network. Uh, I'm just going to uh, click on OK to save that one. And if we just drop down to event log, this is basically a log where we can, uh, if we wanted to view uh, any actions which have occurred in the device, it stores every single um, action, every trigger, every time it's communicated to, every date change, any enrollments, any clockings will all be in here. Um, so, and we can uh, choose by different event types if we want to do that. Um, if you wanted to delete all the logs, you can do. It'll um, sort of make sure that the memory isn't fully uh, uh, occupied, but uh, you have to make sure, obviously, you've got all of your clockings downloaded before you do that, before it's safe to do so. Okay, so that's pretty much uh, everything I wanted to go through, really, in terms of the settings. Uh, that would be a general basic setup of a, of a face light. Um, there are some, obviously, some further uh, settings in there that we could go into in more detail, but uh, that's probably for more advanced uh, requirements. Thank you very much.